December's numbers have come in and they are quite a bit lower than most expected. Now, does that mean that we're headed for a cliff in 2024? Not in what I am seeing in the numbers and the trends. Now, if you have a look at the last market update video that I did, make sure to pay close attention to the forecast or my prediction for 2024. I will stand by that prediction today as I am reviewing the stats. Now, it's not a cliff. It's a bit of a hill, but nothing that someone with a reconstructed knee couldn't climb. All right, I'm gonna break down the numbers for you in a constructive and informative way and I'm going to make sure that you get a good understanding of where the market sits here at the beginning of 2024. Now, before we get there, though, I want to review this quick article that I read in Kelowna now titled BC House Prices Could Surge Once Again Due to Increasing Immigration and Lack of Supply, says Economist. Now, this has got to be one of the biggest clickbait headlines that I've ever seen from this publication, Kelowna Now. In the article, it mentions an economist from a credit union in BC, and he talks about how buyers could come back into the market once interest rates start to drop. Now, nowhere does it mention immigration. Nowhere does it mention how immigrants are actually going to be able to buy in Canada. It is completely misleading and, in my opinion, fairly irresponsible. Now, there's still a foreign buyer ban on in Canada right now, and only 1% of all of our sales in the central Okanagan have come from outside of the country, which, if accurate, tells me that the people purchasing must have been classified as permanent residents or they took advantage of a loophole in the legislation. Also, it takes about two years to become a permanent resident. So the idea that immigration is going to somehow magically turn the tide on the BC housing market is laughable. All right, enough with the crazy headlines. Let's get into the update. But before we do, I have to ask you to go ahead and hit that like button, share this video with those that you feel will help, and make sure that you hit the subscribe button to get notified as soon as the next video is uploaded to the channel. Okay, so how did we finish the year 2023? Well, sales are down 16.6% from 2022 numbers, which was expected. The market peaked in 2022, where we saw record benchmark pricing for single-family homes. Of course, we know the drop-off happened in that 12-month time frame between March of 22 and March of 2023, where we saw prices drop 15 percentage points. So how did the single-family market fare in 2023? Well, if you look at year-over-year -year numbers, which if you watch these update videos, you know I'm not a fan of, December 2022 to 23, the single family numbers are down 3%, meaning prices are down three points. Now, if you look at the entirety of 2023, the single family home benchmark price started the year at $967,700 and ended the year at $966,500. This was a 0.2% decrease in pricing. The condos finished the year down about 3% with the benchmark price coming in at $480,800 and townhouses finished the year with a drop of only a half of a percentage point. I also like to look at the absorption rates, which is a fancy term for months on supply. The way we calculate this is to take the total number of sales for each property type and divide it by 12. Then we take that number and divide it into the total number of active listings for that property type. Now, when I do that as a whole with every segment included, single family homes, townhouses, and apartment style condos, the absorption rate or months of supply comes in at 5.3, which actually signifies a somewhat balanced market. Now, a good benchmark that I use is anywhere from zero to three months of supply and you're in a buyer's market. Anywhere from three to five months of supply, you're in a balanced market and anything over and above that five month mark and you are moving into a seller's market. Now, are we there yet? If the sales trend continues down like it has been and the active listing numbers continues to climb, we will be in seller's market territory before the end of the first quarter. Now, over the course of the last year, we saw an increase in the amount of active listings quarter over quarter, with Q1 kicking off with an increase of 111%. Now, that shouldn't be a huge surprise, as this is when the start of the spring market actually gets going. So that number is expected and not surprising. In the second quarter, we saw an increase of 27%. Q3 saw an increase of 10.4%, and then Q4, came in at an increase of 26%. Now, if we take the average, we see an increase of active listings in 2023 over 2022 of around 44%. And with sales in decline, there is a massive gap that seems to be opening up. That gap between total active listings and the drop in sales is about 28%. Now, if we maintain these high numbers through Q1, meaning we continue to see sales lagging in a marked increase in inventory, we will be firmly planted in a seller's market with the absorption rate well above that five months by the end of Q1. Now we can attribute 
higher interest rates to the pause in buying in the central Okanagan as a whole. Economists are saying rates could see a significant drop by the end of Q3, which is nine months away. So if buyers are looking to time affordability, we could be looking at a very long year in terms of Kelowna real estate. Now this data is in large part the reason that I suggested in my last market update video that we could see a drop in pricing by as much as 4%. So how are things looking in other property segments? Well, townhouses are down about 0.5% and the absorption rate is sitting at 5.52 months. And the apartment style condos are down 3% as mentioned earlier and the absorption rate is sitting at 4.92 months of supply. Now, I think the townhouse market will likely fare a lot better than the condo market in 2024, simply, simply due to the amount of product that is coming into the Kelowna market for apartments over the next couple of years. I see the same thing happening here in Kelowna as it played out in Calgary all the way back between 2007 and 2010, which had a tremendous effect on the condo market over the course of the next decade. A decrease in buyers slash demand and a massive increase in supply absolutely decimated that market in Calgary for the better part of a decade. So do I see the same thing happening here playing out exactly as it did in Calgary? Well, not exactly. I do think the condo market here is going to take a hit, but it won't be prolonged. With a correction in pricing, we will likely start to see investors come back into that market as well as an increase of first time buyers. Now there still isn't a ton of room to build these massive developments, so for now, Geography will continue to be our friend. Of course, this city council is very bullish on building up versus building out, just like they were in Calgary during the Nenshi years. Okay, last thing I wanted to touch on was mortgage renewals and how that might affect the market here in the central Okanagan. Now, here's some interesting stats not a lot of people know about, but I can tell you that our association actually tracks this data as we're supposed to fill out a survey every time we complete a transaction with a buyer. That survey asks where the buyer came from. Were they out of province? Were they inside the province? Were they from the area? Were they outside of the central Okanagan, outside of the area? Now they also track mortgage data that I assume they obtained from CMHC. Now this is the interesting part. According to third quarter stats from 2023, 51% of all sales that happened up to that point last year had a conventional mortgage, meaning the buyer had put down 20% or more versus 11% of all sales that were high ratio insured, which is less than a 20% down payment. Now here's the other interesting stat. 38% of all sales in the central Okanagan up to and including the third quarter of 2023 were all cash sales, no mortgages. So yes, lots of mortgage renewals coming up from buyers who bought in 2020 and 2021. Those four and five year mortgages are definitely coming due, but here's the thing. Most of the buyers that bought back then had to qualify for a mortgage at what are coincidentally the best posted rates today. The banks make you qualify at a higher rate to ensure that you can afford to make your payments in the event that the interest rates jump. So when a lot of these owners renew, they will renew at rates they can likely afford. Now, will it suck? Of course it will. I'm not saying that it won't. What I am saying, however, is that this will likely not be a driving factor of increased foreclosures and a housing bubble popping here in the central Okanagan. Overall, we're in for a bit of a bumpy ride in Kelowna over the next nine months or so. There is nothing in the trends that I see that point towards the crash of all crashes. We are still likely correcting and will continue to correct, in my opinion, until 2025 when we see balance to the market return. Okay, that's all I got for you this month. If you have any questions about the market, if you are looking at making a move into or out of Kelowna, then we should talk. As always, you can give me a call or shoot me a text to 403-827-7527, or you can email me at info at livelovekelowna.ca. Or alternatively, you can scroll down below and click on the first link in the description, which allows you to pick a time and a way to chat, either Zoom, phone, in person, whatever works for you. Okay, that's all I got for you. We'll see you on the next video.